Hello everybody! Thanks a lot for joining me. It is the day after 4th of July as I'm shooting this and I am quite tired. I'm actually verging on a little bit slap happy so this could be an interesting video for you. <sighs> Out of the blue a couple weeks ago I went to Dollar Tree. I'm not sure what exactly... What was I looking for? Why was I there? There's normally a reason. What was I there for? Oh, I think I was going to see if I could find some good little, like, or drawer organizer type things. Because you can always get, like, the best deal on that stuff at Dollar Tree because everything's a dollar. Well, lo and behold, I walked past the makeup section. They were actually stocked the heck up. Like, they had everything. And it's a lot of LA colors. <laughs> but I mean, they had, like, foundations and concealers and powders and stuff. And normally they don't have it. Like, I've wanted to do a full face of makeup from Dollar Tree before, but it was like, I'd only go there and find an eyeshadow palette and a lipstick and maybe an eyeliner or something. So when I realized that they were fully stocked, I thought I'm gonna try to pull this off and do a full face of makeup from Dollar Tree. I think I've done Dollar General before and probably like maybe the Shop Miss A website or something. Everything here is totaling $10. It's all $1 each. So I'm just gonna jump in and see how it goes. And plus it's interesting because LA Colors is a brand that is putting out like quite a bit of stuff into the new makeup marketplace. They're putting out new foundations. They're sending out PR, but yet they do have these products that are just selling for a dollar. I am noticing in some cases smaller sizes, like with the foundation. This is a foundation I got from Dollar Tree and it's 0.42 fluid ounces. And then the LA Colors new Radiant foundation that's come out, that's gonna be um, 0.96 fluid ounces. So in some cases, I think this low cost is reflected by the amount of product you're actually getting, but we're just gonna see what works. Does it actually work? So I've already moisturized, I've already tweezed my eyebrows, and we're gonna jump in and try to do this. So I got this liquid makeup, as you may have seen. What shade did I get? Shade selection sucked. Like, it was not good though. There might have been like one shade of concealer, two shades of foundation. So there's the additional challenge for making this work. I have the color called Natural. It's got a little pump, and this is going to be like a I'm just trying it. We're all experiencing it together style video. Like I'm trying on the haul for you, basically. So there may be some things that with a little practice or, you know, giving it more use, I might um, learn some new things about. This has kind of a fresh smell. It smells kind of like maybe a deodorant I've used in the past. Okay, and it seems incredibly sheer. This is why they put out one shade. They're like, it doesn't matter. It'll be sheer enough to work for everyone. I mean, it's probably like the lightness of a tinted moisturizer, probably less coverage than my Aveeno Positively Radiant CC Cream. It says liquid makeup. I guess it technically didn't call itself foundation. I wonder if I can build up the coverage just a tad. Also, I want to know in the comments section, does anybody absolutely love this stuff? Has anybody tried this and thinks it's awesome? I would say maybe it's a little buildable. I definitely don't think it would take you to full coverage or anything, but I think you can build it a little. Now this concealer here, I have this in nude. So let's see how this goes. Just looks like a standard concealer with a doe foot applicator. Okay, show me what you got, concealer. Dabbing it in. Can it take away my dark under eyes? A little. Maybe. It's tough when you've been using Tarte Maracuja Creaseless Concealer and then you throw this on. It's not doing nothing. <laughs> How's that for a review? Concealer needs a little building up if I'm going to cover my melasma better over here. I'm just kind of blotting over the product so I can maintain as much coverage as it can give me. I wouldn't say this concealer feels watery or anything. It just isn't amounting to a whole lot of coverage. It's less definitely than like the Wet n Wild photo focus that I was using the other day, but it it is buildable. Like that did something, adding more. But I think my shade of concealer might actually be a hair darker than my foundation, so I've got to kind of blend a bit. Don't worry, there's powder. I got the powder in beige. The compact is so off the charts cheap. Oh, what the? There's this odd little piece right here and it's like it doesn't want to close down on top of it. What? Defective, it has to be defective. That 
that shouldn't. Okay. The powder doesn't feel terrible. Now, LA Colors is the brand that makes that mineral press powder that I think is luxuriously great and feels amazing. Um, this is not on that level, but we're going to use some. I'm going to set the under eye with it a bit. Are any of these products going to work their way into my regular routine, you know? Is anything a hidden gem? I'm always out for a hidden gem. This powder is enhancing the coverage of everything. Now I'm gonna go in with a bigger brush. I feel like this powder is saying, okay, I'll pick up the slack for where those other two products couldn't quite do it. It's definitely mattifying, but like if you can't close your powder, and then it, it, it just wants to stay open like that. Like, do I have to slide it in from the side? Wait. Oh, I got it. it. I clicked it back into place. I have a bronzer. It looks a lot like CoverGirl Cheekers, but it's LA Colors Bronzer in the shade Bronze. It's shimmery. It's going to be kind of glowy. I'm going to use my e.l.f. complexion brush with it. Let's see. Does it show up? Can you tell? It's light. Deeper skin tones would not want to try this. But I am building up a little color, I feel like. Down the neck, too. We watched fireworks from the pool last night, and it was awesome. I don't know why we hadn't done that before. Maybe weather was an issue or something. I don't know. I'm getting a little soft bit of contour out of this. It also, while it has some shimmer, it doesn't look like unnatural on the skin. You know, it actually looks kind of good for a very subtle bronze, you know? If it's subtle on my skin, it's maybe not gonna be enough for tan or deeper skin tones. Now, they did have several shades of blush to choose from. There may have only been like one foundation color, but there were like three or four blush colors. It wasn't actually that any of this looked very picked over. I mean, it seemed like they were stocked. I got the blush shade called Peach Rose here, and it does have like a kind of cool, I don't know, silvery sparkle within a mauve colored blush. Let's just see what it'll do. Sometimes in situations like this, the shimmer just doesn't even really factor in, like it doesn't show much. Ooh, that's a, pr that's a pretty blush. Okay, now I am seeing actually a little bit of sparkle on my cheeks and I'm not loving that, but I am loving the color. The sparkle almost is hitting me like right in here and looking like a highlight though. And I don't think I have a separate highlight, so. So the face is done and it's not awful. The blush kind of saved things. The bronzer was not bad. The liquid makeup was a complete like just sheer nothingness. The concealer was not ideal, not something I'd want to go back to. And the powder, while not a terrible thing, I feel like the just opening and closing the compact is a huge bother there. Now for one dollar, I got this eyeshadow palette. They did have a few color options here. This says eyeshadow bold, chic, get the bold look. But I'm realizing I don't have anything for my brows and I'm wondering how I'm going to pull that off. There's not really a brown in here. It's kind of cool and purpley and blue. I also don't have eye primer, but I think I can maybe use a little concealer there. And I'll take a little of my concealer, just dab it, create kind of a base for ourselves. I wonder if they just didn't have brow products. I don't remember seeing anything for brows. Oh, it's uh, I've had some kind of compacts like this before. There's a brand called Beauty Treats, and I don't remember if theirs smelled this strongly, but their palettes are this size and they're actually really good. They put out some great like neutral matte and cool matte palettes, but this smells so much like old perfume. It's not even funny. What shade can possibly be my brow color here? Maybe the darkest color, just a little bit. I'm gonna have to make it work. Fortunately, I don't need a ton of brow help, but yep, I'm doing it. I'm using a deep plum, eyeshadow in my brows, everybody. I did not think my day was gonna go in this direction, but it's fine. <laughs> you can't tell, can you? Oh, there'll be somebody in the comments saying I could totally tell that was plum eyeshadow. This is what we call making it work. Being resourceful. I can hardly tell this is plum. I mean, it just looks dark. It's dark and cool toned, which is more than I can say for some things I've put in my brows. Everybody cool with that? <laughs> um, OK, 
Okay, so let's put some of this shade right here, this kind of dusty purple in my crease and see how it goes. Hmm, I can see it. It is rather dusty. Like you put your brush in it, there's a lot of fallout. Now I have not pre-swatched these because I don't even want to have a preconceived notion of, oh, this palette sucks. I just want to, you know, put it on and see how it actually does where it counts, which is on the eyes. Let's give it a little more juice here. Let's take this purple. It's kind of, like, it's just faint, you know? It's kind of helping, but not really. Now, if I had a really good quality eye primer on underneath this, is my lid tack? My lid is just the slightest bit tacky after that concealer. I want this to be like a freaking amazing eyeshadow look. Like, I want to make this as good as it can possibly be. So I am continuing to build up that purple, so hopefully you can see it. Okay. Blend out the edge. Go ahead and apply a highlight. There's kind of a peach here. And every shade has this, like, trace of sparkle. <laughs> Some are more shimmery than others, obviously, but um, every shade's just got a little something. Let's do a little bit of this white. Let's see what the white is made of. Because sometimes they'll say, oh, okay. I was going to say, sometimes they'll surprise you a little bit. The white's giving us a little something to get excited about here, I think. It does have a little shimmer but it's like kind of standing out. There are just so many like mid-tones in this palette. And then, you know, I used this, this one down here, this purple didn't really have a lot of color payoff as you saw. Um, there's a lot of mid-tones that I just think are gonna turn out to look pretty murky. So for the ultimate contrast, I think I'm gonna go for this darkest shade here, <laughs> the shade that doubled his brow and see if I can apply this on my outer corner and make it kind of pop, you know? Because just given that it's darker, it will have to show up better than most of the shades in here, right? The thing about 4th of July fireworks is that there's always those people after the official, you know, fireworks show that you went to watch. There's always those people who don't know when to stop setting off fireworks. And you're hearing popping sounds all into the night. And you're just hoping your kids don't wake up. Belle and Eve got to stay up like two hours past their normal bedtime, so they should be tired. I'm going to be completely real with you guys. These eyeshadows are not good. You know, they, they kind of suck. They don't really show up true to color. Like, the white did okay. The darkest shade, I mean, I patted that on a lot, and it just kind of looks bleh. But I'm going to use some more with my little Morphe brush to see if I can really get intensity here. Can I get darkness? I don't know, that's interesting. It's actually like going into my crease a little bit better than it was packing on my lid. I just want you guys to know I am trying. I'm trying my best. I don't think the blending is terrible. Like, I mean, <laughs> maybe that's one of the benefits to having shadows that are really, really soft and not super pigmented is that your look will come off kind of blended. Um, I'm still kind of curious about this shade here. This purple. So I'm going to pick that up with my little wispy white E36 brush. And maybe we can use that kind of as a transition here. Like it's not probably going to show up a lot, but just faintly. Okay. So that's basically my eyeshadow look here. I need to do a little something on the lower lash line, but I really tried. For the lower lash line, I will try to smudge some of this shade. It's not showing up too, you know, vibrantly. Like, this is the name of the game. There's just no real color vibrancy. Somehow they made things look semi-colorful in this palette, but once it comes time to apply them to the skin, it's just not really translating much. Here's something cool that they had that I thought would help my look, the liquid eyeliner. And it said it had a very fine tip. You know, this doesn't look half bad. And it's going on really black. It doesn't seem watery. I'm not sure what this is going to amount to staying power-wise, but this is not a disappointing application at all. Little wing, no problem. The sad issue with the blush that I can see when I look up really close at myself here they gave us a really pretty color, but there is so much sparkle that actually does show up on your cheeks. So you look up close and you look like you've just done glitter, like a spray of actual silvery glitter. 
The brush carries very little product, which is kind of good in terms of giving you some control as you apply, but bad in the sense that you have to keep stopping what you're doing here and go back in for more product. But that is not a bad line. Staying power, I was like, I got a swatch here on my hand. Sorry for this really rough staying power test, but I'm licking my finger and I'm rubbing across it and it's not going anywhere, so. Now I do need to add a little bit more of that darkest eyeshadow in here to blend in with my wing. To take a line from Clueless, I think this look is going to be a major Monet. Meaning from a distance it looks all right, but up close it's kind of a mess. Oh my gosh. I also don't have a mascara, so we're going to have to continue with our make it work theme here. I do have lashes, that's the thing. So. I normally would apply mascara to my own before putting on false lashes, but I think I'll just use my lash curler because I am allowing myself all my tools and brushes. And then I'll put on this Wet n Wild Shutter Shock, it says, lashes right here. I gotta stay true to my word, you know? This is when I'm saying it's a $10 look. I can't go throwing in enough products to make it $15. <laughs> They're already doing something funky just being pulled off. They're gonna need a trim. Definitely. <sighs> I feel like I'm putting myself through a lot of stress on this morning after the 4th of July. <laughs> I need to just, you know, makeup you don't really have to try with. Maybe that should have been the theme. Makeup that applies itself, basically. <laughs> I forgot that trick, that viral trick where you take a spoolie wand. Oh, it does work. It's making these look fluffier and better. Like some of these cheap lashes where it looks like all the lashes are stuck together. Shoot, now I've already got glue on this one, but I don't care, I'll re-glue. Because look, like, do you see the difference? This one has been all zhuzhed out and this is the way it comes. Like it looks somehow massively longer and fluffier. Oh my gosh, I've somehow gotten like a ton of fallout or like maybe it was the liner that was on my fingers or something. But I've got a problem to correct over here. This does not look good. I've got like a huge smudge. Then maybe go back over it. Yeah, I am getting some of the stuff off. Ooh. But I'll go back over it with some concealer. I get these lashes on. See, this set wasn't getting as quite as nicely fluffed. They weren't sticking to the packaging. They're not terrible. I would ideally have a little mascara there helping me combine the real and the fake, but let's real quickly toss on some extra concealer here. Can't blame the product for this. This was, this was operator error. Or maybe the eyeshadow did just jump onto my cheek. Okay, we'll do that. And then we'll open up this godforsaken powder again. It's basically been corrected now. And then, I'm not doing this because I love the blush, but just to kind of even out and not look like I just reapplied concealer with powder over it. I hate how fiercely though that they have glued these lashes onto the packaging because it does make it hard to remove them. Sometimes I try to remove with tweezers, which in a lot of cases does work fine, but sometimes with a little bit cheaper, lower quality lashes, even that is enough to sort of tear them up. Here's something I'm really not loving about that eyeliner though. It's kind of a vinyl look. You know, like as I turn my head, it's not totally matte. It looked as though it was going on like a matte black liquid liner, but there is a lot of shine on it. I'm gonna curl my lashes, give them some hope of bonding with the fake ones. Now due to fireworks, I did not get to watch an episode of Dawson's Creek last night, and I need to find out if Dawson's parents are gonna get back together. Here we go, guys. I mean, I'll take the lash over no lash. It's better than no lash, and that is saying something. Because there are some false lashes that are so bad that you're like, oh my gosh, I'd just look, I'd be better off without them. I think they're better than nothing. And I think this side did fluff out better and actually created a really decent lash. I just wish I could have thought to do that before I took this one off of the packaging. Because they were glued onto the packaging for dear life and that made it easier to go over them. But just remember that little trick if you do get some lashes that look just a little bit like PC and you want them more fluffy. The last things that I got are 
lip products here. I have the full meal deal. I've got a lipstick that came with a lip liner and I've also got a lip gloss. This color is Black Orchid and you may say, well, why exactly did you choose that shade? Well, I thought if I went for a dark shade, it might give me a range of options. Sometimes a good dark lipstick, like I was almost picturing um, Revlon, Super Lustrous, Black Cherry, that can look like five different ways. It can look really dark or you can sheer it out and it kind of appears to be at different levels, you know? Let's see what the lip liner... I feel like it's gonna be dry. It's in a very pointy tip and I don't have any lip balm on. The lip liner just looks kind of like a nude. Did I say the brand is Colormates? They had maybe, I don't know, two or three lipstick options there. They had like, of course, a really frosty fuchsia, but I went dark. We'll see if it was a smart choice or not. As this liner is sort of warming up on my lips, it's not, it's not really bad to apply. It's just a very standard lip pencil. It's such a little pencil. Look how tiny it is. How about this lipstick? Aloe Vera Vitamin E Baby. Oh, it's real dark. It's a real brownish shade that doesn't seem to have any level of pink or, or red in it so much. The old Dab and Smooth. I thought this was going to be kind of like Revlon Black Cherry where there was a surprising level of pink, kind of a reddish undertone to it, but this is just straight up brown and I don't hate it. And I'm going to apply my lip gloss now. This is just a clear lip gloss. See if we like the texture. Really strong scent that I feel like I remember smelling a lot in my teenage years. Like almost a little bit tropical and it's very thin, so I don't want to over apply it or else it's going to feel really greasy on the lips. I just give a little shine and smooth this. It might have actually been wise to prep the lips with a little bit of this first because it's not one of those real tacky glosses. It's just, it might have felt a little moisturizing actually. Well friends, this is it. This is my $10 face. What do you think? What was best? What was worst? The foundation is a real like kind of do nothing foundation. I feel like I've tried something like this in the past where you put it on and it's just like barely a tinted moisturizer. So it is what it is. In a sense, if this had been kind of an off shade and it was really, really thick seeming on the skin and not forgiving at all, we could have had another set of problems there. So maybe I should be grateful that it just didn't show too much and I was able to make it work with my skin. The concealer was buildable, I thought. It does have a really thin feeling to it and I'm left still seeing some problem areas, but it's not the worst. And I think the fact that LA Colors with these products, they're not erring on the side of being too thick because that's when a person can be in a real mess. So I think if they figure we'll lighten up on the coverage, then our shades will work for more people and at least they won't come away looking ultra cakey. So there's that. The powder kind of saved the coverage of the look, honestly, but the packaging is just god awful. Like I feel like it's the cheapest compact they could find and then the closure is so weird. The bronzer was all right. Like, I'm, I'm not mad at the bronzer. The blush, I wish it didn't have that crazy sparkle in it, which if you look at me up close, like really close, you can see this. I don't know if it's just looking like a sheen to you here on camera, but when I look up close in my mirror, like I can see the glittery particles. So that's the deal breaker for me on the blush. Otherwise, it was decently pigmented. So maybe if you run across some of these LA Colors blushes, and they don't look like they have sparkle, you could give them a chance, you know, because they work pretty well. The eyeshadow is just kind of a miss for me in terms of really getting what I think I should get out of a palette like this, you know? The color payoff is very weak, although I was able to get a look with it. I was able to try, I was able to build up certain shades and get something, and plus, you know, a brow color. What? The eyeliner is fine and I am going to keep this in my collection. Um, I'm just going to have to keep in mind that if I'm wanting matte black liner, it's not matte. It has sort of this vinyl shine to it. These Wet n Wild lashes I would not repurchase. The band is really flimsy and kind of hard to control. So if you're not really used to working with lashes a lot, you may struggle. Although wasn't it interesting how we could fluff them out a little bit and at least make the lashes look kind of Fuller. This clear gloss is really, really thin. There is no tackiness to it and also no thickness to it. So it's not unusable because it's just a clear gloss. So it could help out certain lip products maybe. But then this Color Mates lipstick, I mean, not bad. Not bad for a brown lipstick, right? I tried to just dab it on pretty lightly so I didn't get too, too much happening there, but it's not terrible. So I think the winners might actually be, for me, 
the bronzer, the eyeliner, and the Color Mates little lip duo. But I hope you guys found this entertaining, learned a thing or two. Um, sometimes you just gotta get creative to try to make things work, and I think we did make it work. So I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye. My friends, I wasn't really, sorry, I gotta get here. I wasn't really planning to do a check-in on this look, but I just caught myself in the mirror after not really paying attention for a good chunk of the day. Look at the lashes. Like they just, the band is so, wonky and like wanting to be straight that it cannot just stay curved down because I normally don't have issues with the glue that I use and I feel like I honestly across my skin I don't look like I have much on except that darn blush because look look at all that glitter you can still totally see there it's adhered the eyeshadow you know I didn't ooh, I didn't use an actual primer so that might have had something to do with it that i was using the concealer i don't know how i can even be taken seriously right now but the shadow is kind of you know there in some ways sort of faded in others i don't know guys i just thought i should keep it real and show you the finished product so biddy you have anything you want to add hi some oh